2. The operation of the Holy Spirit in general. A. Transition to the work of the Holy Spirit. As already intimated in the preceding, in passing from Christology to Soteriology, we pass from the objective to the subjective, from the work which God accomplished for us in Christ and which is in its sacrificial aspect a finished work, to the work which he realizes as time goes on in the hearts and lives of believers, and in which they are permitted, and also expected, to cooperate. And in the construction of this doctrine, too, we should be guided by Scripture. Dr. Bavink calls attention to a difficulty that arises here, since the Bible seems to teach on the one hand that the whole work of redemption is finished in Christ, so that nothing remains for man to do, and on the other hand, that the really decisive thing must still be accomplished in and through man. Its teaching respecting the way of redemption seems to be both autosoteric and heterosoteric. Therefore it is necessary to guard against all one-sidedness, and to avoid both the sila of Gnomism, as it appears in Pelagianism, Semipelagianism, Arminianism, and Neonomism, and the Charybdis of Antinomianism, as it reared its head, sometimes as a specific doctrine and sometimes as a mere doctrinal tendency, in some of the sects, such as the Nicolaitans, the Alexandrian Gnostics, the Brethren of the Free Spirit, the Anabaptists of the more fanatic type, the followers of Agricola, the Moravians, and some of the Plymouth Brethren. Gnomism denies the sovereign election of God by which he has infallibly determined, not on the basis of the foreseen attitude or works of men, but according to his good pleasure, who would and would not be saved, rejects the idea that Christ by his atoning death, not only made salvation possible, but actually secured it for all those for whom he laid down his life, so that eternal life is in the most absolute sense of the word a free gift of God, and in its bestowal human merits are not taken into consideration, and maintains, either that man can save himself without the aid of renewing grace, Pelagianism, or can accomplish this with the assistance of divine grace, Semipelagianism and Arminianism. On the other hand Antinomianism, which is sometimes said to be favoured by Hyper-Calvinism, holds that the imputation of our sins to Christ made him personally a sinner and that the application of his righteousness to us makes us personally righteous, so that God sees no sin in us any more, that the union of believers with Christ is a union of identity, and makes them in all respects one with him, that the work of the Holy Spirit is quite superfluous, since the sinner's redemption was completed on the cross, or, even more extreme, that the work of Christ was also unnecessary, since the whole matter was settled in the eternal decree of God, that the sinner is justified in the resurrection of Christ or even in the counsel of redemption and therefore does not need justification by faith or receives in this merely a declaration of a previously accomplished justification, and that believers are free from the law, not only as a condition of the covenant of works, but also as a rule of life. It virtually denies the personality and work of the Holy Spirit, and in some cases even the objective atonement through Christ. Both atonement and justification are from eternity. The penitent sinner wrongly proceeds on the assumption that God is angry with him and merely needs information on that point. Moreover, he should realize that whatever sins he may commit cannot affect his standing with God. Scripture teaches us to recognize a certain economy in the work of creation and redemption and warrants our speaking of the Father, and our creation, of the Son and our redemption, and of the Holy Spirit and our sanctification. The Holy Spirit has not only a personality of his own, but also a distinctive method of working, and therefore we should distinguish between the work of Christ in meriting salvation and the work of the Holy Spirit in applying it. Christ met the demands of divine justice and merited all the blessings of salvation. But his work is not yet finished. He continues it in heaven, in order to put those for whom he laid down his life in possession of all that he has merited for them. Even the work of application is a work of Christ, but a work which he accomplishes through the agency of the Holy Spirit. Though this work stands out in the economy of redemption as the work of the Holy Spirit, it cannot for a moment be separated from the work of Christ. It is rooted in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ and carries this to completion, and that not without the cooperation of the subjects of redemption. Christ himself points out the close connection when he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come. He shall guide you into all the truth, for he shall not speak from himself, but what things soever he shall hear, these shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine, and shall declare it unto you. John 16 verses 13 and 14.